Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, and I'm here with another White Sox video because the White Sox are all the rage in the offseason. In fact, they've gotten among the highest grades that I've seen for uh, teams in the offseason as far as winning the offseason. So, um, and they've made a lot of great moves. I mean, just a quick recap, they re-signed Abreu um, for three, I think it was three years. They went out and they got Grandal um, as their starting catcher. They, um, they traded for Mazzara to be an outfielder on the team. They, um, they, they bolstered their pitching staff by going out and getting Gio Gonzalez and signing Dallas Keuchel um, to contracts to, uh, to pitch for the team. Um, and then of course they've got players on the way, as we know. They've got um, uh, Kopech should be coming back from his injury, his Tommy John surgery. Uh, Dylan Cease should be should make the starting rotation um, out of spring training uh, after spending last year in the minors, um, and um, they uh, they haven't done much with the bullpen yet. Uh, but I'm still hoping that the uh, bullpen is going to get some some work done. On it. So anyway. Um, what I want to talk about today is some of the player projections for the White Sox. We're not going to get into where they, where I think they're going to finish. I think they're going to have a very good year, though. Uh, but we're not going to get into where they're going to finish just yet because there's still some off-season time left, and there's um, and there's some other player projections that should be coming out later. In fact, I get the every year I get the uh, the baseball prospectus and that'll give me some insight into the players on the White Sox, the players on the Twins, the players on the Royals and that will help us uh, figure out what we can really expect from the White Sox in 2020. Personally I think it's going to be a first or second uh, place finish in the AL Central. Could be second and that probably only depends on the Twins because the uh, Indians are dismantling. The Royals really aren't that great just yet, and they haven't done anything like the White Sox have been doing. And I don't know that their system is even as good as the White Sox system is. And the uh, Detroit Tigers are just a complete mess. So um, that really leaves, I think it's between, it's going to, I think it's going to come down to the White Sox or the Twins as far as who's going to win that division. Now, whether the White Sox actually win the division or finish behind the Twins depends on um, how the players play. I think a lot of the Twins last year, they just had career years. And I think I recall that the Twins aren't bringing scope back. I think Jonathan Scope is going somewhere else. So, and he was part of their, he was part of their, um, their power outburst. So, uh, and, and, and really the Twins led the league in the major leagues in home runs last year. And that's something I don't know if that's really repeatable. It may have been a lot of, uh, you know, like I said, a lot of uh, career years for a lot of the Twins. So, it's questionable that the Twins will be quite as good as they were last year. We'll have to see, but I'm not so sure that they will. And that might open the door for the Chicago White Sox to take over the AL Central. Now, um, what I'm going to talk about mainly is the Zips projections for next year for a lot of the players on the team. And if you're unfamiliar with ZIPS, it, it stand, really it stands for Zimbrowski Projection System. Zimbrowski was a guy that worked for Fangraphs um, and came up with a uh, system to project player performance based on growth and decline curves on player types, on you know, similar player types to whatever player you're talking about, and to find trends 
in those um, uh, in those projection or in those uh, in those player performances, similar type player performances, to project what any given player what they you, what you could expect from any given player. It also uses their past performance and does it so it kind of tweaks it to a uh, to an individualized level. And that's, you know, basically what they do. And we're going to also talk about a little bit about projected war. If you're unfamiliar with war, what it stands for is wins above replacement. And it basically projects how many wins a player will contrib contribute to his team relative to what they call a replacement player or a player from the minors or um, basically a below average to uh, subpar player. So uh, I, um, I, I suppose a, re a replacement player would be a zero war. It wouldn't contribute anything, wouldn't subtract anything from a player from a team's win-loss record. And so um, players with positive war, depending on how far up the ladder that war goes, that's how um, how much better they would be than a replacement player. And um, an eight war is like um, a super elite all-star type player. Somebody like Mike Trout would be an eight war. Um, and I think Giolito last year, for you White Sox fans, to put it in a frame of reference, I think Giolito last year was like a 4.1 or something war. Um, so that's a very good player. That's you know, um, you know, touching touching all star level. Um, and then like you know, two war is a good solid player, I guess, uh, that type thing. So anyway, that, I mean that that's basically how it is, um, it, as far as um, my understanding of it. But there's probably people out there. We're a lot better at knowing what war is exactly, and um, can correct me if I'm wrong. And if that if I am wrong, leave a comment below. Let me know in the comments. I'm always willing to learn more about you know what these analytics are and what they mean. But anyway, that's what the um, that's what Zips is, and we're going to talk a lot about Zips, and then a little bit about about also about war. So here's some notes that I took on the White Sox for next year, the White Sox projections. Um, Zips uh, projects Moncada um, to be to have finally turned the corner. They've said that in the past, but they think that now he truly has turned the corner and should be um, an all-star type player going forward. Uh, they see Lewis Robert and Nick Mandrigal as um, instant contributors, but we'll see in a moment what that means exactly. Uh, they see Mendick as a serviceable stopgap at second base until, event until he eventually loses his job to Mandrigal and becomes a backup. So, what um, you know, what their the brain trust here is saying is Mandrigal will be the second baseman. But the White Sox may wait to bring him up because of that, you know, that April clock. They don't want it to start yet, and so they're going to wait to bring him up. But when they do bring him up, Mandrigal will be the second baseman, and then Mendick will be like a, uh, a backup utility infielder, I suppose. Um, and you know, curiously here, they're not high on Abreu. And Abreu hit 284 with 33 home runs yet, uh, last year. They're probably projecting that he's going to start his decline based on his age, um, and um, yeah, I mean, and that's that's certainly possible. It's certainly possible that that's going to happen. In fact, the article that I read said that the White Sox really should start looking past the Abreu era rather than trying to extend it. I don't know if that's really how I would see it because if you if you um, 
If you project Abreu to be the like a Paul Molitor type, he could really play and be very productive well into his early 40s. So um, we don't know. Is is that where he, you know, is that the type of player he is, or is he the type of player that is just getting older and is going to decline as age sets in? And we'll see. That I guess that's what Zips is saying as far as they're concerned. They also see Kopech as either a huge success or a complete flop, but they're not sure which because they have a whole missing recent year of productivity that they don't know about, so they can't really accurately project it. And now this was something I, I found that was, was pretty interesting, is somebody that nobody's talking about is uh, Bernardo Flores and Zips projects him as a competent fourth or fifth starter. Now of course the article I read it appears as though it came out before uh, the White Sox signed Giolito and Keuchel because it doesn't even talk about them and if you're talking about a guy that nobody really knows much about as being a uh, as being a fourth or fifth starter on a team that has Giolito and has Keuchel and has um, 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 Gio Gonzalez now and Ronaldo Lopez then you know and Dylan Cease coming up th then it's kind of a crowded rotation now um, he is the number 27 prospect I suppose in the, in the White Sox system and uh, he was 3-8 and eight with a 3.33 ERA and 15 starts last year at Birmingham of AA. So, and they did project him to be a 2020 um, White Sox pitcher. But, again, that was before Gonzalez and Keuchel hit the scene. So now here's what I was talking about before with the war. This is the... Um, projected war for 2020 for various players on the team. Once you get below this uh, certain mark here, they're not, you know, the war isn't all that great. So you can see we've got up there at the top, uh, Grandall is projected to be a 4.5 war, which is interesting because last year he was a 2.5, somewhere between 2.5 and 2.8, something like that. And they're projecting him to be 4.5 this year. So that's a huge jump for someone who's only getting older, but maybe, I don't know, maybe they think that right now the experience he's got has put him at a place where they expect him to really bust out. And, you know, who am I to say that's not true? Then you got Moncada with a 3.6. They're projecting Lewis Robert at a 2.3. Eloy Jimenez at 2.1. Timmy Anderson at 1.8. Mandragal at 1.7. You see here Abreu 1.5 and um, uh, Daniel Mendick at 1.3. And then down in the pitching section, you've got Giolito projected to 4.1, Dylan Cease and Ronaldo Lopez at 1.4 each, Michael Kopech at 1.3, Dallas Keuchel at 2.5 and Gonzalez at 1.2. Now, as I mentioned, the article and the information I found was pre um, Keuchel and Gonzalez. So these projections are probably based on Keuchel being on Atlanta and uh, Gonzalez being on Milwaukee, which of course they aren't now. So that's where you are with the war. Um, you can take that for what it is, um, you know, and I'm not, I don't think I'm as much of an authority as to say, you know, whether a 1.2 war is even good. And with guys like Mendick and Lewis Robert and Mandrigal, you got to believe they really don't know. They're just projecting based on minor league statistics and you know what they and their their maturity and how ready they might be to step in for the White Sox but I don't think anybody really knows that uh, you can 
do all the projections you want. I mean, you know, uh, Trout wasn't actually even the first pick in the draft that he was in. So projecting things like that, I think, is kind of iffy. We'll know more once those guys get a year under their belts. Um, they get a season like Jimenez. Jimenez's projection, one, what was it, 1.2? Um, I don't know if that's really um, how accurate that is, but at least they have a major league season to refer to in the case of Jimenez. So that's uh, that's just uh, that's my discussion on some of uh, the the zips and the um, um, and the war projections. And you'll notice Encarnacion was not in there. I forgot to put him in. Obviously, his war is. Probably, you got to believe it's over two. It's probably somewhere around three, between um, 2.0 and three something. Um, he is going to hit a lot of home runs. He'll hit 30 some home runs. That's going to happen. The, uh, the concern, though, is that A, he's not going to play defense, so he doesn't get a projected war for his defensive contributions and he's not going to hit for a high average probably somewhere around 235 240 uh, but he will hit the 33 home runs 35 home runs 31 whatever between 31 and 35 homers so um you know we'll see um if anybody out there knows what the projected war for um uh, and can RC own is leave it in the comments let everybody else see um any information you've got on any of these player projections would be great. It would be really nice to get a dialogue going, talking about the White Sox, getting excited about the White Sox, because, as I said, and if you go back and you watch the, the Grandall video that I did when they signed Grandall, I was kind of on the fence because I knew the White Sox had a history of not really going out and getting people and not spending the money that they needed to spend. And so I was cautiously optimistic at the time when they signed Grandall because I, I, and I said at the time, they need to do more. They've got to do more than Grandall. If they go out and they do more than Grandall, then I liked their chances and I liked the signing of Grandall. And they certainly have done that. They've done a lot more besides just Grandall. So you can see that they're going for it. I think they've made a lot of really smart moves. Like I said, two things I think they really need to do. They gotta, they've still got to shore up the bullpen a little bit. And I would like to see them replace Renteria at manager with somebody else. Somebody a little younger, someone who's more in, you know, hip into the stuff that's going on, the analytics. And... Um, would be more in touch with young players than somebody like Renteria. I don't think that he's the man for the job. He was a great caretaker when the team was going to be bad and was going to, you know, walk through the valley of death for a while. But now I don't think that he's the guy going forward. And, um, but I do like, in general, I like what the team's doing. I mean, they're following the Houston blueprint almost to the T. So, um, we'll have to see what that means going forward, but, you know, I like the, uh, I like the chances. I like how we're doing. So, uh, that's what I got for you guys. Uh, remember to subscribe to the channel. I'm going to do a lot of White Sox content all year long. And once the season and the preseason, the preseason and the, you know, um, spring training start and the season gets underway, it's going to be a lot of White Sox content, so subscribe, hit the bell so that you're notified when I'm going to have a new video out, and here's uh, my contact information. If you want to, you know, email me or contact me on Twitter and leave me some of the information that we talked about in the, uh, uh, you know, earlier in the video about player war, player projections, what you've heard, who's going to be on the team, who, you know, anything. Want to get a dialogue going about the White Sox, and I'll even, you know, 
um, pass on stuff that um, you that you know information that you give me, like that I spelled the Breu's name wrong in the previous video, so I made sure I spelled it right this time. Um, although I think that's a minor thing, but anyway, I'm really excited about what the White Sox are doing, and I you know this is going to be your place for White Sox content all through the summer. And we're gonna, and hopefully it's gonna be a great season, and there's gonna be a lot of good things to talk about. But for right now, it's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.